welcome in. My name is Grace. You've reached the Intuitive Lens channel where I talk about astrology. I'm posting every week the weekly astrology um, for the collective. So whatever transits appear, you also may have your own personal transits with the current time. Um, for readings like that, please book a, an individual personal reading. But for now, we're just going to talk about what is going on with the collective astrological weather up above us. As it is right now, at least on the day of this recording, it is the autumnal equinox. It is the shifting into Libra season, Libra's cardinal air. What we know about air is that it's the fastest element. What we know about Libra is that it strives for balance. So we may see signs now starting to, one, quickly, this, this energy of quickness, fastidiousness, applying to different areas of our life. Um, this is the harvest season. And as such, it's like we are quickly preparing for the winter that is to come. Tying up loose ends, finding balance and harmony in parts of our life that feel unfinished or um, not complete. Now, the full moon is happening this coming week. It's on the 29th, I believe, the full moon in Aries. Aries in Libra. This is the first time, the first lunation we have in Aries, the full moon in Aries, since the nodal shifts moved into this place of Aries and Libra axis. So Aries is divisive. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It's the energy of breakthroughs and impulsiveness and finding out who you really are because it rules the first house of identity. The full moon is the finishing of something. And as such, we look to six months past and even two weeks past the major and minor lunar cycles to see what was going on for us at that time, what intentions had we set, and what seeds have we sown. The new moon in Aries six months ago is the beginning of springtime. What intentions were you setting? What has grown? And I want to talk about this metaphor of the seed because it's so uh, topical for the season, for, this, for the harvest season and for the springtime season. And I was having this thought the other day that when we look at like our bounty or what we've sown, we often associate like flowers and fruits and foods, like things that we can consume. And we forget sometimes that seeds grow underground, in the dark, where you can't see them, where it's invisible, and where things may have been taking root, significant root, we still may not see yet the flower or the fruit. That rhymed. That was cool. Um, so think about that. Reflect on this equinox. Asking yourself, what seeds have I sown? What is growing in my garden? How can you acknowledge that which is invisible, potentially? And of course, celebrate all the things that you have accomplished in this summer season, the spring summer season, um, as we prepare for winter the oncoming, you know. So, some other transits happening this week, Mercury, Trine, Jupiter. This is growth and expansion through our mind our, our, and our intellect and our ideas. There might be lots of clarity. This is a great time to study or seek out a mentor. This is a great time also to be integrating that which you've learned. So, if this is relating also to this changing of the seasons, what have you learned in the last several months that you can apply to the months moving forward? And how do you prepare with your knowledge and your capacity for understanding for the coming months ahead? Another transit, Mercury trine Uranus. Again, another Mercury transit, and it's it's interacting with Uranus, which is retrograde in Taurus. By the way, Jupiter is also retrograde in Taurus. Isn't it? Yeah. Remember I said a few weeks ago this Taurus Virgo energy was very loud and now I know it's because there's several important planets um, in Taurus retrograding. Taurus is about the body. Taurus is about also our values and our wealth and our health. Health is wealth. 
This is again saying what information is easily grasped. This is applying a lot of the principles of thought and understanding in, and bringing those into the tangible world. If your thoughts manifest your reality, this is kind of the essence of what I'm getting is you create your world. You create the tangible physical things in front of you. And it also reminds me that what you believe is what you get. You know, if you say you can or cannot, you are correct. I read somewhere online, a friend had posted, I'm not exactly sure who, but it's not relevant here. They said in a long post, I cannot change. I will not change. And I was like, okay, you have, you're, you're deciding that. But the truth is we all can change. There must be a desire for change first. And what we know about desire is that it comes from our ability to be receptive and open to what wants to come in. And so with this energy of expansion and growth, this Mercury trying Jupiter, Mercury trying Uranus, Uranus is like revolution, rebellion, surprise. We can surprise ourselves with things that come from within us as well. Like, oh, I never knew I was into that. Oh, I never knew that I felt this way. Because it's in the subconscious, but when it gets a chance to come up, to finally burst through that the top layer of soil and become something real, because suddenly we can see it, we can acknowledge it. Acknowledgement is the smallest seed to plant. Once you acknowledge something, and this is the magic of intention and where this metaphor of the seed really becomes like really cool for me. Once you plant a seed of intention, it's the smallest seed of an acknowledgement, you will be guided you will, you will start to receive messages, you will start to receive guidance, things will start to become louder. When we say something is loud, means it's got your attention, means it um, suddenly has meaning, even if we don't know what it is, right? How do we plant seeds of intention if we don't know what we want? That's, I think, a challenging question. Acknowledge you don't know what you want. Acknowledge that you're open to receiving what it is this experience is for in this moment. What is this experience here to teach me? Um, and then the last thing I'll say is Venus is square Uranus. There is one challenging aspect here, the square with Venus and Uranus. Again, so Venus ruling um, Libra as well, right? And Taurus at the same time. There we have again our values. Venus is what that which we love. How do we approach and welcome things that we love? And Uranus, again, is the revolutionary, right? It's the planet of surprise. It's the planet of, um, it's the planet of genius, upheavals, and breakthrough. So again, we see breakthrough with Aries, again. With the full moon in Aries, we have a transit with Venus and Uranus. Something is for sure breaking through. You may not have known what has been growing under the surface, but I think you're about to find out. So <laughs> I wrote some advice for the full moon. Brace yourself for impulsiveness, um, whether it's coming from you or from somebody else. I think, you know, my experience has been is like things getting blurted out without thinking. This is a time to integrate your thinking mind with the part of yourself that craves action that craves freedom and independence, this whole season, the next two years, 18 months, whatever, when the, while the nodes are in Aries Libra, we're learning what it means to be interdependent. How can we maintain our own level of self, like our, our, our essence to ourself, but be adaptable in such a way to move through different circles, to build long and lasting relationships, and to support one another as we move through this life. Stay true to yourself. And also a question for you with this full moon in Aries, where have you been holding back? Hmm. Okay, so today I have the Sacred Traveler Oracle deck. I love this deck by Denise Lynn. Let's just pull one card for a general message. 
great adventure. What's more Aries than that? Take a risk, venture forward. If there's something you've been thinking about, it's time to put some action behind those thoughts and intentions. Take a risk, venture forward. It's a great card to start on. Um, underneath, sorry, I just saw it, so I have to say it. Distant thunder, clear the air. This is not a tower moment, but this is like a coming tower moment. So how can you, again, how can you prepare yourself for what you intuit is to come? What are you doing? Instead of putting your head in the sand, how can you be more action oriented without being impulsive? But rather, you know, Mercury is pretty loud this week. We have grown in our strength of intellect and rational thinking. We have grown a lot in that capacity, like as a collective of what we know. You know, like now they told us aliens exist, but we always knew. Do you know what I mean? What have you always known and just not taken action on? All right, let's get into our reading. Great adventure. Venture forward, take a risk. Yeah, like I'm thinking, what are those, if, if something hasn't grown fully, like what, what will fertilize? What will, what will fertilize the soil for that seed to blossom, to fruit? Because once we have the flower or the fruit, then we can really enjoy um, our efforts. We will know that it wasn't in vain. We will know that something has come of it. Um, and if nothing is coming yet, do not worry because it's growing strong roots, right? The deeper the roots grow, I feel like I'm, I'm assessing this metaphor in the sense that they're reaching down deeper, deeper, right into our subconscious. So with that, it may be kind of like an uncomfortable energy if you're kind of in this position of resistance to take action because spirit wants us to take action, take a risk, venture forward. All right. Underneath the star, beautiful healing energy. There's hope and there's the high priestess. Limited only by your own potential, your own thoughts. I recently learned that on this card, she doesn't have a roof over her head. And she represents our wisdom, our desire for knowledge. So here I see underpinned the Mercury transits as well. Well, for a second I thought those were peacock feathers behind there, but I guess not. Those are like pomegranates, I think. The star and the high priestess as the energy underneath, okay, and the nine of wands. There is a pattern that is healing. The spiritual path is about venturing forward. This is, again, our first house is activated, so it gives me the sense that this is about your spiritual journey. This isn't about anybody else. There is some healing that is happening around our spirituality and let's get deeper into it but I just this message that came out with this energy underneath right away is this idea that you can't take people with you you want you know as you learn things and integrate them into your own life we have this sometimes feeling everyone needs to know about this we you know life could be better if we just do this like I'm healing and you can heal too that is a bit of that impulse of Aries, just like wanting to break through suddenly. But what I see here is there's more of a nurturance for your inner wisdom and really wanting to understand how this is impacting your life. The Nine of Wands reminds me that only you can step through this gate to the other side. It is something that happens totally on your own. But this beautiful, you know, the star here, she's naked. This is about vulnerability. 
And I will say, Leo isn't, Leo energy is, is coming up for me a little bit. This like energy of bravery. Two of Pentacles. Okay. King of Swords in reverse. Nine of Swords. Okay. <laughs> What's showing is that you're staying busy in order to repress some truth. Um, we're not exactly, what's showing here is we're not exactly willing to look at the reality of what's going on. Um, maybe somebody is in our life wanting to tell us some truth. So where, where, however this resonates for you, right? Either you're on the spiritual path and you're wanting to share it with others and bring people with you, or you're this um, more in this energy of do, 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 and therefore you're not really stopping to think about why is it you're having so many worries or concerns? Why is my nervous system, my body, having these upheavals? Your bo as an energetic system, your body has an intelligence. And it's only when you can quiet the body, quiet the mind, and stop doing things and stop worrying so much about things that aren't really important, like or immediate, valid, there are immediate things, that we have to get through in life. But the body holds an intelligence. This also sort of says dreams, right? So the, the nine of uh, swords can indicate dreams. Um, it also is a reminder that we are not alone. Every zodiac sign is present on this blanket. It's kind of reminding me of like how we meet in dreams sometimes. You know, that ever happened to you? Meet people in your dreams? Then you ask them later, hey, were you? did we have the same dream? <laughs> It reminds me of like telepathy and um, being able to connect on a subconscious level, on an intellectual level, sort of, um, you know, if our, if our thoughts are like radio waves, something like that is, is here. Death in reverse, so there's transformation. The tower, okay. So we saw the distant thunder card come up. It was underneath and I felt like calling it out. This is, and I don't want to scare you, but this is very much feeling like prepare, okay? If you don't make adjustments now, if you don't take a risk to venture forward to transform yourself, the death card in other decks, I have another deck that shows the death card as um, like, it's an animal themed deck and it shows and I, well, I don't know what kind of animal, but it's like sort of deceased on the ground. And you could see how the, this, um, this flower or this plant is growing out from the decaying body. Again, this metaphor of the seed, right? Our endings are rich soil for new beginnings. So what is ending now? What is resisting ending now that could be the potential start of something incredibly transformative and healing and also potentially open up your mind right this high priestess is is um, reminding us of our divinity and our intuition and our ability to yeah be connected telepathically to be connected by something greater than just what's in front of us okay and we have a six i believe it's the six six of wands Victory card. Okay. Let's keep going. A few more. Knight of Swords. There's the impulsiveness. Right? It's not necessarily Aries. It's air. That could be Libra. Cardinal air. Seven of Cups. Confusion. Page of Swords. In reverse. There's also some impulsiveness there, right? This is essential, you know, the, the Page of Swords, as I know it, by the way, is the energy to deal with the tower. It's saying, look, I don't have all the answers. In fact, I've never done this before. But I'm here. And I'm showing up to deal with whatever is going on. This sword that he holds, whoops, where is he? Represents the sort of like knowledge and idea the power of an idea to inspire and to move one to action. So we see both the Page of Swords and the Knight of Swords. 
we have the tower and the star. The star comes right after the tower in the tarot because after you've allowed things to collapse, things that were never really meant for you anyway, when the wheel turns and things need to start changing and we're res resisting adaptation, as in not taking the lessons that we've learned, not taking the things that have come into our life, our blessings and our curses, right? And all of it. And begun to use those tools to heal ourselves. Then we get confused. Then we get concerned. Because we're not totally integrating these things on a physical level. I see no pentacles here. So that's why I'm saying, oh, sorry, the two of pentacles. Two of Pentacles feels like busy work. It feels unsustainable. It feels like if you don't address this, the tower will come, which is Uranus. Right? We heard about the Uranus transit. And it's going to change things uh, on our behalf. No matter what, this is a positive reading because it's like even in our darkest moments when we don't feel we have the strength to make a change or if acknowledging something is just too difficult this is not going to be a comfort comfortable experience but six of wands tells me that there is victory there is acknowledgement there's something here that just gets us through it and it's going to be a confusing period of time. But I think you're going to get that clarity. Page of Swords. That's a message coming through. And so the medicine of this reading, besides just take a risk, venture forward, this doesn't necessarily have to be a physical task, this venture forward. Maybe you do have some, some things that you need to go out and, and take care of. But by and large, this feels sort of like a mental thing. It feels very much like we're, it's calling us to see some truth, acknowledge what is below the surface, um, what are these areas of concern that give us certain worrisome emotions, or if our body is activated and triggered into anxiety. We're confused about this, and sometimes the way of dealing with confusing or challenging emotions um, Knight of Swords is to take care of them as quickly as possible. But what if you acknowledge that you simply don't know and that you're willing to feel what's here until you're guided to the next best path? You know, acknowledgement is such a powerful tool. Like, it's not enough sometimes to acknowledge things to yourself, like I'll say that, or maybe it is, sometimes it is. That's what the journal is for. But let's say if you're having an argument with somebody, it's really powerful to say like, hey, I'm feeling this way, and this is my truth. You could be bringing your own truth, your own clarity to something, and that's moving things to change. And remember, you know, if this is about a relationship or about people in general in your life, Sometimes when we make a small shift, it creates ripple effects and things sort of change outwardly from us. To heal yourself is to heal the world. If you really feel like you're on the spiritual path and you're like, I need everybody to know just how, you know, how transformative spirituality is, or, you know, if you want people to find themselves in their own language with the universe, which often happens when people are like first waking up. You do that by just doing your own work. You don't, there's nothing else you need to do besides cultivate your own inner wisdom. It's a ripple effect. Uh, Eight of Swords underneath. This is telling me that, that this breakthrough, this energy of Aries full moon, we are collectively slowing down. We have a lot of planets in retrograde. So I feel this energy of push and pull between what is action oriented forward, but is also not um, too rapid or fast. The smallest adjustments, the most invisible adjustments, um, in the small, the small and the invisible, the the small nudges have huge impacts. Just think about how small words small actions can have 
big consequences. That's sort of what's showing here. Let me just pull like one or two cards as like the closer. Thank you for the two cards. Here we go. Ah, three of Pentacles and the Eight of Cups. Again, I see themes of Aries and Libra. Libra being this um, this interdependence. Three of Pentacles is about our self-worth. It's acknowledging that everything that we have is within us, is valuable. And that we must seek out places and people who value us. And that we have something to contribute in order to build something greater than ourselves. And the Eight of Cups is about experiencing disappointment and ultimately, ultimately dis making a decision to move forward. And so it is. A, it feels like a bit of a um, opposite energies. And the medicine might be here is that if you're experiencing a situation where you're not being valued, for example, for your gifts or for what you're bringing to the table, it doesn't matter how much experience you have whether you're a novice or an expert, your mind, the way that you think is inherently valuable and it's your duty to go out and find where your skills, your talents, you, your ways of thinking are valued so that you can contribute to building something bigger than yourself. And this is the challenge, is that we oftentimes want to be in community. We want to feel safe and to feel, and you know, stand next to others. And at what point, ask yourself, is this inhibiting the growth of your seeds in your garden? This autumn, this shift into autumnal weather, you know, the, the autumn season. It's not an easy task to acknowledge that what you're going through is difficult for you. Nobody else might acknowledge or see that. So it's up to you to make those choices to venture forward and take a risk and move move more towards, you know, do you see how they're lining up those, like they're moving away from this? So it also just gives me a message that like where you are right now, there, if this is true for you, that there may, may be a situation that you don't feel totally valued or you're spending time in a situation where you're not building the thing that you really want. So what do you want? <laughs> You know, it, this could be life's greatest challenge is just figuring out what we want. Acknowledging that we don't know what we want and going forward, venturing forward, taking risks in order to explore uh, more parts of ourself. Um, and again, our, our emotions here, we have the cups. Our emotions are great indicators of our body telling us, yes, this, no, not this. And... Um, Tune in. Tune in and, and, and listen. Thanks for joining me this week. I hope that you liked the video and found it helpful. Please consider sharing, uh, subscribing, and thank you so much for being here. See you next time.